Do you have your kitty layer with you? Well, if you do, then congratulations, because today we're going to be talking about Cat Scratch. I'm Brendan, and here with me today is my good friend Colton. Hello, and one thing before we start, I know it's been a long time since we did this. Yep. So, anyways, we haven't watched a Cat Scratch episode in a while, so I'm sorry this podcast is going to be short. With that said, let's get started. If any of you hear that in the background, that's Colton eating something. Yeah, so I mean this yummy, delicious cosmic brownie. Alright, so, for those of you who don't know, which I'm pretty sure all of you don't know, Cat Scratch was this Nicktoon that lasted from 2005 to 2007. And strangely, it only lasted for about a season, with 20 episodes. Which is kind of sad when you think about it. Yeah, but my thing is, I don't know why it was short-lived. It was such a good cartoon. Either the ratings weren't good, or Doug Tenable was losing ideas, or you just thought his cartoon wasn't that special, or... I don't know. But whatever it is, I wish another season could have been made. Yeah. So Cat Scratch has three characters. Their names are Gordon, Waffle, and Mr. Blick. And as the end show said, when the old lady died, she left them rich. Yep. Which is the characters we're going to be talking about. And keep in mind, the characters I'm going to be mentioning, they're all going to be quoted from Wikipedia. So anyways, let's start off with Mr. Blick. Mr. Blick is the self-appointed leader of the group who's confident, pampered, and vain. He is a black cat who often gets himself into major trouble and is prone to near-death injuries. Mr. Blick is proud of his newly inherited riches and spends his money on anything and everything that spells respect and power. Mr. Blick always insults his two brothers. Mr. Blick's catchphrases are, yeah, and suckers. He is the oldest of the three. I would like to point out that Mr. Blick is actually played by Newman himself, also known as Wayne Knight, who also played a certain owner of a toy store, which we'll get to at some point. Next up, we're going to move on to Gordon Quid voiced by Rob Paulson. Gordon is an outspoken member of the Highland Quid Clan and acts like he's from Scotland, despite the fact that he is not. However, he speaks with a thick stereotypical Scottish accent. He is kind-hearted and has a soft spot for human, quote-unquote, Kimberly, and loves to sing, which quite regularly angers his older brother, Mr. Blick. He is also an excellent cook, usually cooking Scottish recipes, which a lot of people don't find edible. He has an orange patch on his right eye, and in the Lovesick episode, shows that he is allergic to both broccoli and chocolate, which cause disastrous effects upon contact. At first, the reaction seems to consist of typical allergic symptoms, such as sneezing. But eventually, out of all the lights appear to go out, and he turns into a Mr. Hyde-like monster, similar to a cat-like monster they were watching in a movie. Somewhat fortunately, particularly for Mr. Blick and Waffle, no feature episode involves or mentions Gordon and his allergies. In some episodes, Gordon is shown with green colored eyes, but in others, he has blue. Judging from his short tail, he is a Manx. Gordon also has a mission set before him, to get Mr. Blick to do the right thing. Gordon's catchphrases are, In the name of the Highland Quid Clan, Feel My Sting, Great Gopher, Cheer, and sometimes Papa Wheelie. He is the shortest of the three, younger than Mr. Blick, but older than Waffle. Yeah, Waffle is my favorite character, and he is an extremely enthusiastic, yet naive, and a childish cat. Yeah, for some reason, he seems to have this huge obsession with Kimberly, but he calls her as Human Kimberly. I don't know why, but yay, I guess? Yeah, and Waffle also has an affinity for Newt's. And the thing is, the newts remind me of, well, the singing newts in the intro, but from what I remember, I don't think they even had characters. Yeah, I don't know either. But for whatever reason, let's move on to Waffle, voiced by Captain McDonald. Waffle is an extremely enthusiastic, naive, and childish cat. He has an affinity for newts, like Colton said, and can speak newt Guise, a language supposedly spoken by newts, as if he were a newt himself. Waffle is also a lover of life, who is overly optimistic. His catchphrases are splee and woohoo, when he's happy and gets super excited about all things silly. Waffle has been wowed by revolving doors, fingers, bubble wrap, and newts, again. He also wishes roller coasters were public transportation. 
Woody Donut straight from Donut Trees, Don't Ask Why, loves zero-gravity basketball, and smelling the pictures of flowers on shirts. Waffle also likes doing flagellant sounds with his underarms. He is a gray tabby cat with long floppy ears and a long tail with dark periwinkle stripes like his right ear. He is the tallest and the youngest of the three. Yeah, and um, one of the other characters that uh, like helps out the cats is Hoibus, which is the butler for a Mrs. Uh, Cram Dillies, and he's also voiced by Maurice Lamarch. Maurice Lamarch. Oh, okay, the E is silent. Okay. Yeah, Hoibus is Mrs. Cram Dillies' butler and has stayed on to look after the cats and collect his measly paychecks which Mr. Blake signs. He's not exactly thrilled about his new situation, but he hails from a long line of butlers who have served in the house, and he honestly believes he has nowhere else to go. Therefore, he's not a pet anymore. He still asks Hovis to be let out and scratch behind his ears. Hovis puts up the fact that the former pets have become his masters. His birthday is April 14th, 1982, as seen in Love Jackal. Hova's voices sound similar to the butler to the Sherman family on The Critic, which Lamarche also portrayed. Well, no shit! Maurice Lamarche has also been in other stuff like Animaniacs. We'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah, I don't know if we will, but maybe, who knows, we're very in particular. Maybe we'll talk about The Critic series one day. Next up, let's talk about Kimberly, voiced by Liliana Mumi, who has a similar voice to a certain character from a certain show from Playhouse Disney that we'll get to eventually. Anyway... Kimberly is an 8-year-old girl with a good nature personality, a gap in her teeth, and an obsession with unicorns. She must have been watching too much My Little Pony. Anyway, she is one of the few human friends the cats have. She doesn't think they are greedy, and just accepts her feline neighbors for who they are, and sees the good in their hearts. She is also completely unaware of the fact that Gordon has a complete infatuation with her. She has three human friends named Caitlin, Caitlin, and Charlotte. So... I'm sorry for the pause, it's just that, like we said in the beginning, we haven't watched the show in a while, and we're really off because we haven't seen the show in a while. But, uh, anyways, there was this one episode called Slumber Party, where Kimberly buys all the root beer in a store for a girls only sleepover party. However, the cats have a plan to get root beer for themselves at any cost, by disguising themselves as girls in order to attain the party. One of my favorite parts of the episode is where one of the cats accidentally throws a pillow at a girl. At first, it may seem like a bad thing, but it turns out that the girl actually wants to have a pillow fight. Yeah, shows like these always have memorable moments, but it's short-lived. Yeah, thanks to Nickelodeon not giving a shit about it. Yeah, recently Nickelodeon has been making all these new shows and some ripping off another and... By the way... If you thought we got all the characters done, oh, just wait, there's one more we have to talk about. Katilda. From what I've heard, she's not as bad, but at the same time, she's not good either. Katilda, voiced by Hinden Walsh, has a bright imagination. In the first episode of the same game, the cats find out that Katilda's imagination may be a bit too active. By the way, she imaginates a lot in two of the episodes. I remember this other episode called Corruption, where Kimberly fails on her project for school, which was the Earth's core, made out of glitter, cotton candy, rainbows, and other feminine stuff, which made her upset. Seeing her upset, Gordon decides to actually go to the center of the Earth and put her project in there, which turns everything into goody two-shoes and sunshine and rainbows. Hell, even the characters turn all goody two-shoes and sunshine and rainbows. There's another episode called A Woolly Adventure, where Mr. Blake thinks that a woolly mammoth is actually his father. In the first half of the final episode, I think I remember this, called Spendanko Fundulation, when Mr. Blake beats in the nearly impossible video game of the same name, the cats are transported to an alien planet where Mr. Blake must fight off evil invaders. The only problem, however, is that the conniving feline has rigged the game so he would win. Even though the stakes are high, Mr. Blake is determined to stop the aliens. Cats graduated on Nickelodeon from 2005 to 2007, and on Nicktoons from 2007 to 2009, and as a part of the Nicktoons holiday special, Cat Scratch had two episodes aired on the night of December 19, 2015. Which is just kind of sad, considering that Cat Scratch didn't get that much focus. Yeah, 
If Cartoon Network could rerun classic shows like the original Teen Titans about Dawn Time 2, why couldn't Nickelodeon rerun classic shows like Cat Scratch and all? Because the one in Canada, the Nickelodeon in Canada, reruns classic shows from Nickelodeon. Yeah, why can't they just do that? So all in all, even though I haven't watched the show in a while, I have to give Cat Scratch an 8.3 out of 10. The reason being is because, well, it can't be good in some areas. In others, it's just, eh. So what's your rating, Fulton? About 8 out of 10, because, like, me too, I haven't seen the show in a long time, and it's just, what happened? Yeah, what happened to the show? I'm also curious as to what happened. But anyways, before we end this podcast, we have an announcement to make. Starting in the next video, we're going to be making a new series called Nostalgic Podcast Extras, where we talk about things that we missed in certain podcasts that we did. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, even though it was kind of short. And tune in next time when we discuss about talking trades in a magical place. And we might even have a special guest in the next episode. Leave a comment down below if you know what the show is. And until then, this is me and Colton signing off. Peace.